श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम यज्ञ अपूर्व सहा च यज्ञ कर्म समुद्भव ऋत्विक यजमान च व्यापारा कर्म तत्समुद्भव ये यज्ञ अपूर्व से स यज्ञ कर्म समुद्भव द रीजन वाई वन शुड कीप वन सेल इन एक्शन कर्म बिकॉज इवन द वर्ल्ड इज मेन्टेन ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ दिस यज्ञ एंड देर फोर ही गिवज धीस प्रिंसिपल अन्नाभवती भूता एंड पर्जन्यात अन्न संभव यज्ञाभवती पर्जन्य यज्ञ कर्म समुद्भव सो आफ्टर हैविंग टोल्ड हिज फर्स्ट फोर बेसिक्स देन द क्वेश्चन कम्स यज्ञ कर्म समुद्भव देन वेयर फ्रॉम द कर्म कम्स नाउ द फिफ्टीन वर्स कर्म ब्रह्मोद्भव विधि ब्रह्माक्षर समुद्भव तस्मागत ब्रह्म नित्यम यज्ञे प्रतिष्ठित कर्म ब्रह्मोद्भव ब्रह्म वेद सह उद्भव कारण ये तद्ब्रह्मोद्भव विधि जानी ही कर्म इज वॉट कर्म इज ऑल दो विच आर गिवन आउट इन द वेदास हियर द वर्ड ब्रह्म मीन्स शब्द ब्रह्म ब्रह्म मीन्स वेद सो ऑल दिस यज्ञ वेर इज द सोर्स वेर फ्रॉम द यज्ञ आर टोल्ड If you want to get rains, do this yajna. If you want to have the progeny, do this yajna. If you want to have this, do this. Now, who is the authority? Who told it? So this is told in the Vedas. So karma brahmo bhavam vidhi and brahma punaha veda kham akshara samud bhavam. And where from the Vedas have come akshara samud bhavam? Aksharam brahma paramatma. समुद्भव ये तद अक्षर ब्रह्म समुद्भव ब्रह्म वेद इतर्थ सो वेर फ्रॉम द वेदास हैव कम वेदास हैव कम फ्रॉम दि पर ब्रह्म परमात्मा यस्मा साक्षात परमात्माख्या अक्षरा पुरुष निश्वासवत समुद्भूत ब्रह्म बिकॉज दीज ब्रह्म मीन्स द वेदास वेदास आर नथिंग बट द ब्रीदिंग ऑफ द एब्सुल्यूट रियालिटी तस्मात सर्व अर्थ प्रकाश गर्वगत एंड एवरीथिंग इज डेल्ट विथ इन द वेदास एंड देर फोर वेदास आर द अल्टिमेट सोर्स ऑफ नॉलेज सो सर्वगत अपी सत नित्यम एंड बिकॉज इट इज इटर्नल बिकॉज इट इज एवरीवेयर इन एवरीथिंग नित्यम सदा यज्ञ जपी विधि प्रधान यज्ञ प्रतिष्ठित एंड देर फोर ऑल दिस यज्ञ आर नथिंग बट द मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ द पर ब्रह्म परमात्मा नाउ आई एल गिव द ओवरऑल मीनिंग ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्स देर विल टेक सम डिफरेंट टाइप सी कर्म व्हाट शुड बी डन व्हाट शुड नॉट बी डन इट इज नॉट अवर चॉइस For example, we have uh, joined some office, and then according to that position, what karma we are supposed to do? Who will decide? Is it we? No. The one who has appointed us in that particular organization. In the same manner, what karma should be done by whom is not a freedom for us to decide. so our karma's decision is taken by the authority of the vedas 
This is what is the meaning karma brahma bhavam vidhi. See, in the 15th chapter, this thought will come. Chandamsi yasya paranani yastam veda saveda vid. Chandamsi vedas. So, yasya paranani. This urdhva mula madha shakam ashvattam prahuravyayam. Chandamsi yasya paranani. So, this samsara vruksha, this world of relativity, is beautiful only when vedamsi, chandamsi yasya paranani. When the life in this relative world is lived according to the injunctions given by the scriptures. This is the meaning here. Karma Brahmod Bhavam Vidhi. And therefore, whatever we want that we will do, then we are not leading a spiritual life. This is what is said. If we are really lived a spiritual life, then there is bound to be dispassion. So whatever I want to do, that I will do. If this is what we understand by freedom, then we are mistaking and going the wrong way. Therefore, the purpose of karma, the rules and regulations of the Vedas, is to check our licentiousness under the disguise of the freedom. Otherwise, everybody will, I feel this is not right, I feel I should do that. Then there is no possibility of any disciplined coexistence. Therefore, karma brahmod bhavam vidhi. Therefore, whatever is the obligation to us, according to the scriptural authority, that we have to do. Now, question comes, why give so much importance to the scriptures, to the Vedas? Because brahma akshara samud bhavam. Because Vedas are the expression of the absolute reality. It is not the expression of the human mind. That is why Vedas are called as apaurusheya, uncreated by human mind. So, Brahma akshara samudbhavam. And therefore, this is for the good of everyone. It is something like, you now to understand this point. We all have the freedom to drive the car on the road when we have a license. Now, although we have a license to drive the car on the road, that doesn't mean we can drive the car the way we want. No. Your license is valid under certain rules and regulations. In the same manner, we have freedom to live our life. But we can live our life freely under the rules and regulations of the instructions given by the scriptures. Why? Because scriptures or Vedas are the manifestation of the Parabrahma Paramatma and when the traffic rules are made, they are not made for a particular person. They are made for everyone. And therefore, they are the same. And that is why whenever we are following the discipline, whether it is at the totality level or at a small institutional level or at a home level, then only we are leading a proper life, not otherwise. So, Brahma Akshara Samudbhavam, therefore, Tasmar Sarvagatam Brahma, therefore, Tasmar Sarva Artha Prakashakatvat, therefore, these Vedas are the ultimate which tell us everything about what should be done, what should not be done, how should be done, who is the one who is qualified to do the things. Sarva Artha Prakashagatvad, Sarvagatam, and therefore is the most valid authority of knowledge. So, Sarvagatam api sad. So, Nityam Yadne Pratishtitam. So, Nityam Sada, all the time. Yadne Yadne Vidhi Pradhanatvad Yadne Pradhishtitam Meaning what? <clears throat> Whenever our life is according to the discipline imposed on us by the authority of the Vedas then the Vedas are with us and such a person is leading the life exclusively a spiritual life because what he is doing? 
he is not allowing his mind either to go into akarmanyata laziness or not allowing the mind to go into the licentiousness whatever i want to do the kamatmanaha that is also not there then by this what will happen there will be the purification of the heart and in that purified heart there is bound to be inquiry about the truth this is what you can see a basic difference you know in our indian culture and the western culture here in our indian culture when the people are slowly slowly growing whatever path they have followed whether they were serva government servants or business or whatever it is when they are just growing slowly they come towards the retirement time they automatically start thinking in terms of going to some ashram in terms of doing some sadhana in terms of going to some tirtha yatra they never plan anything else other than this because our whole life is oriented if you go to the western world they are only even at the age of 60 70 they will think of getting remarrying and again starting fresh and again the whole indulgence in this world therefore if we really want to lead our life properly we have to be self discipline under the umbrella of vedic injunctions then only we are leading the proper life and such a life does not create karma bandhan this is what we started yajnyarthat karmano nyatra loko yam karma bandhanah so when the karma is done with this way then it will not create any bondage so up to here this is the thought given according to bhagwan shankara's commentary now the same thought when you try to understand this with the modern scenario what it will mean When we said yajnyarthat karmano nyatra loko yam karma vandanah tadartham karma konteya mukta sang samachara Now first of all it was said in the 8th verse niyatam kuru karmatvam you do the karma because doing karma is superior than not doing anything Now that karma if it is of the type of yajna then it will not be creating bondage but if the karma is not of the type of yajna then it will create bondage yajna arthat nyatra karmana now the question comes what is the meaning of yajna yajna means there is give and take business we give also something we take also something so the first principle of yajna is do not accept anything in this world unless you are given something to the world first principle life see in uh, shirdi sai baba's pothi this comes once he was uh, not well and suddenly he came out and called one person hey get one uh, stair ladder i want to go on the top of the house no nobody could ask him any question this avduta you cannot talk you have to simply listen to them if you talk they'll bombard you so one man got the ladder and then he climbed on that ladder went on that house and then he said hey now bring the ladder from the other side so he got the same ladder from the other side and got down from that house over now what for he did god knows and then he took out 1 rupee from his pocket and gave it to that man those days 1 rupee was equivalent to more than 100 rupees today is 100 rupees so he gave that 1 rupee to that man now go take this way and go away from here so this is the principle demonstrated by all the great masters our life should be a life of yajna in yajna there is sacrifice and you know in this pashu bali in that the animal is sacrifice what is the animal in us the animal in us is our ego so whenever any karma that will lead to the liquidation and destruction of our ego such a karma does not create bondage 
and how such a karma can be done when we are living our life with alertness so what is the alertness the first alertness is are we giving to the world more than what we take this is the principle and therefore never shirk from doing good to the world to the utmost capacity of your being then only our life is the life of yajna otherwise every time what we like get what we like get this is contrary to the spirit of yajna that is why when they say na jnana uh, yajna nich yajna dhyan yajna and first thing is we want to collect funds for that no now second thing yajna means it is not an individuals of hair yajna is always as it was said what is said yajna yajna is the um vya the uh, transaction between yajmanayo ho rutviga vyaparah so yajna means the people who know the technical things the rutvigas and those who are doing the karma so the science and the technology is brought together then only the yajna takes place so the rutviga stel now take water in the hand take water in the hand. take achavan take achavan so what is to be done is told by the pandits and who is doing he is called as the who is called as the yajaman so what is the yajna therefore yajna is the translation of the knowledge into action under the guidance of a proper valid authority of knowledge that is the meaning of yajna and in this manner when you do some karma it will not lead to karma bondage so yajna arthat karmano nyatra now the next meaning in yajna it is never being an individual affair yajna means we keep in view all the possible people or things around us in our mind so our near and dears then our uh, neighbors then our society then our country then the whole world and then all the things and beings therefore the ultimate prayer is sarve bhavantu sukhinaha sarve santu niramayaha so yajna means an activity conducted in a scientifically perfect manner for the welfare of the totality such activity is called as yajna when such a karma is done it will not create any bondage see now in this yajna nobody can claim that i am the one who has done everything no because whenever for example in your cricket match going on now in that is not one person everybody contributes so yajna means a cooperative approach to the life in such a manner that everybody is benefited and every individual contributor is doing his best this type of lifestyle is called as yajna so when the life is not lived according to this then it becomes a burden then it becomes a bondage now how it becomes a burden or a bondage when we see in the families the elderly person if he is frustrated i have done so much for all of you now in my old age nobody is supporting me gang gang that means he was carrying the load on his head that he is the one who is responsible for everything that is happening in the life i remember uh, once it happened somewhere and uh, i was just observing arguments but uh, why did you do that you only told me that to do this therefore i did it but now i am only telling you don't do that so he said okay i'll not do this then that son was disgusted he said daddy given authority to you 
you will decide how many times I should breathe or I should not breathe. See, such people have the notion that everything they are doing in this world and as a result, they feel lonely, they feel isolated and frustration, depression, all that thing comes only because they have not lived their life with the spirit of yajna. This is what is called as the bondage born out of karma. Now, why uh, this yajna and how this yajna is to be uh, conducted? So why we have analyzed now how? Mukta Sangaha, first principle. Whenever we are doing anything in this world, we must not be obsessed. This principle also I told you a number of times. What we do in social work is impose our views on others. It is called a social work. And this is not only called social work, but also a religious work. Like you know a Christian. What a Christian feels, if I can convert somebody, I have done the highest uh, favor to the Lord. Because I got one more vote. In this manner, when certain things are done, they are not mukta sangha, they are obsessions. So, we have no obsession of any kind. Do your job beautifully well. We have no business to impose our views on others. Like, you know, many elderly people have got this problem. The other day I was in Aurangabad, the old man was telling. Swamiji, you should do something, you know, actually our Sanskriti is going to dogs and all kinds of things and all that. And what is Sanskriti? The grandchildren don't listen to us. Individual frustration, nationalized is called as philosophy. So, I said, but this is not the case everywhere. I have seen many places where the grandchildren respect uh, grandparents and there is a very harmonious living. No, 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 in our house it is not like that. I said, then it is an isolated case. So, don't generalize the whole thing. Why this happens? Because we must be obsessed and imposing our views on them. Do you mean that we should not tell anything to our grandchildren? I said, no, unless they want. Don't impose your views on others. Then you are leading a life of yajna. Otherwise, it is something like that. Uh, if you take to our religion, I will send you to Germany. Do you think that it is doing a favor to anybody? No. Mukta Sangha and Samachara. So this is one of the most important aspects of the spiritual life. Whatever you do in your life, do it as a piece of art, perfect. This must become our natural lifestyle in every field. How we eat, how we wash, how we gargle, how we talk to people. These small, small things make a lot of difference in life. This I was very, I became very aware about it. When one uh, small girl came and told me, she said, Swamiji, tell me why I like you. I said, because you are sweet. No, 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 no. Then because I am sweet. No, no, no. Then because both of us are bitter, therefore we like each other. No. I said, then tell why. You know, you will not laugh. I said, no, I will not laugh. When you take food, you don't make a sound. You can imagine how much the children are observant. And I will not tell you the name. Then she said, no, no, that Swami, whenever he comes, I get out of the house. I can't stand him eating food. Why he has to make such a big noise? Why don't you tell him? I said, hey, Beta, don't talk all nonsense. You don't let you go out. But don't say all this. We should not point out faults of others. So, Samachara, anything that we do must be a piece of art. Then only we are leading a real life of Yajna. Now, further, Sahayajna Praja Srishtva Puro Vacha Prajapati. 
So when the Lord created this spirit of yajna, so what is the spirit of yajna? We are seeing in this ninth verse, and He said, "Anena prasavishadvam." So when you follow this spirit, what is the spirit now? Spirit is mukta sangha samachara. As a result, you will have. Prosperity in the outer world because samachara, everything you are doing meticulously beautiful, you are bound to be successful. And mukta sangha, therefore your mind will be purified. So what is the result of this yajna? Two fold. One, prosperity in the outer world and purity in the inner heart. And by, that is what Bhagwan says. Puro vacha prajapati hi anena prasavishadvam. By this alone, you will really have the excellence in life. This is the word from the management. So anena prasavishadvam. By this, you will attain excellence. And vahato ista kamaduk. So this spirit of yatnya is really a bestower of all your desires, this worldly as well as the other world. Continuing this, Bhagwan says, "Devan bhavayata ne na te deva bhavayantu ha." Now, what is the meaning of the devas? Devas means, like you know, as I told you in our scriptures, we have got three aspects: adi bhautik, daivik, and adhyatmik. Eyes that you are seeing, my eyes, the structural eyes, they are adi bhautik eyes, structures. Then the vision, because of which I am seeing you, is the adhyatmic eye. The vision, and third is the light in whose light I am seeing you as the objects, and that light which is expressing through my eyes as the vision, that is the adhi daivik. So three aspects. Now what Bhagwan says, deva means. This adi daivik aspect of our personality. So devan bhavayata ne na, when all your faculties are sharp and bright, then what will happen? Ti deva bhavayantu ha, your performance will be extremely wonderful. Remember our Nachike. Don't forget him. He is our guru. What he said: Shobhava martyasya jadanta kaitat sarvendriyanam jarayanti tejaha. Whenever we indulge excessively in this world, our faculties become blunt. When the faculties become blunt, our performance goes down. When our performance goes down, prosperity falls. And when we are doing the yajna, we are leading a life of self-discipline, purity, sacrifice. See, as a result, when we function in this world, it is for keeping our faculties intact. So we are not obliging the world. See, this very attitude will make a lot of difference. I'll tell you this: what is the meaning of changing in attitude? One day, one person asked me this question. Recently, he said, "Swami ji, when you are giving your lectures, I always feel as if you are talking to me personally. So, why this happens?" I said, "Because I talk to you only. I don't talk to anybody. I am talking only to you." Now, see. what is important is when i as a speaker talk to you and if i do not have respect and reverence for you my language will be different and when i as a speaker have respect and reverence for you then my language will be different And when can I have I have the respect and reverence for you? When I know you are not in need of my talk, it is me who need to talk to you. 
if you are not here am i going to talk to the walls about the truth no so your contribution is more important than my talking when i become aware of this fact how can i be arrogant see the basic difference and if i have this notion you ignorant stupid fools immediately the whole attitude will change the language will change the approach will change the statements will be modified and there will not be love and reverence but there will be bitterness and condemnation this is what is a big difference that makes in life therefore here bhagwan says sahayajna praja srushtva puro vacha prajapati in every yajna there is always a transaction of give and take and in this transaction of give and take the one who is giving is more in need than the one who is receiving see and as a result prasavishadvam uh, both of you grow see, those who are taught they know when you teach you learn more because teaching is basically a process of learning anena prasavishadvam in this manner when there is an understanding between the teacher and the student that this satsang that we have is for the benefit of both and therefore the prayer is om sahana bhavatu sahana bhunaktu sah viryam karavavahai this prayer is not meant for taking food because bhunaktu together we eat that is not the meaning therefore the spirit of togetherness the spirit of living together for a common cause the spirit where individuality is dissolved and the totality is revered is the spirit of yajna by which we attain individual prosperity as well as total prosperity anena prasavishadvam now when this happens देवान भावयता ते देवा भावयंतु हा तो वेन यू स्टार्ट लिविंग विथ दिस प्रिंसिपल देवा मीन्स ऑल युअर फैकल्टी प्रिसाइडिंग डेटीज सो वेन एवरी वन ऑफ अस इज लिविंग विथ दिस एटीट्यूड वॉट विल हैपन ऑल अवर फैकल्टीज विल रिमेन ब्रिलियंट एंड ब्राइट वेन अवर फैकल्टीज आर ब्रिलियंट एंड ब्राइट देन वॉट विल हैपन देवा भावयंतु हा our performance will be extraordinary see i tell you what is exactly meant by this when now see i have stopped writing for almost so many years now when i start writing first line comes okay afterwards as i go down then you have to run finally in the straight lines or the hand doesn't move fast because that use of the hand for writing almost stopped in the same manner when we are living in this world in a lazy indolent way all our faculties will become dull witted and as a result our performance will be down and therefore when we are functioning in this world remember it is our need the world does not need us or our performance and what is our need by this alone our faculties remain sharp and bright and when our faculties are sharp and bright deva bhavayantu vaha those bright faculties will be a blessing to us and in this manner parasparam bhavayantaha so we work in this world for our need and as a result our mind remains calm and quiet our intellect gets surrendered with the ego and becomes free from the clutches of the arrogance of success and the guilt of failure and such a person he is thus able to prosper so parasparam bhavayanta means what together we progress individually and totally in this manner 
శ్రేయ పరమ వాప్సత అండ్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద పరమ శ్రేయ వాట్ ఈస్ ద అబ్సల్యూట్ గుడ్ అబ్సల్యూట్ గుడ్ ఈజ్ ఇన్ ద వర్ల్డ్ ఆల్సో వీ ఆర్ ప్రాస్పరస్ అట్ ద సేమ్ టైమ్ వీ ఆర్ నో వీఆర్ ల్యాకింగ్ ఆన్ ద స్పిరిచువల్ పాత్ వరల్డ్ ఈ ప్రాస్పారిటీ వితౌట్ ద స్పిరిచువల్ బ్యాక్ డ్రాప్ లీడ్స్ టు పర్వర్షన్ as you see in the western world they have got too much of material prosperity you know i have seen so many people and the more you observe the more you feel what our scriptures have told is so true and right see when a person gets the things at the right time in his or her life then that attainment is meaningful and can be digested you know our ramkrishna paramahams is to tell no? that the uh, milk from a tigress cannot be held in any pot except the golden pot it breaks in the same manner sudden material prosperity received by a person makes him disbalanced and what is the disbalance perversion see and this is what this consumerism has started all over the world earlier what was our philosophy uh spend less than what you earn and save money that was the philosophy so that used to keep us already under control so cut your coat according to the cloths spread your legs according to the bed sheet but now what it is you don't worry you come and take the loan and start enjoying life and once you get into this comfortable prosperous life even a uh, borrowed money then we become slave to that and the whole life thereafter is a life of slavery otherwise what is the reason that in the most prosperous countries like usa why there is so much of theft why there is so much of burglary why the people are attack and things are snatch away see what is the reason it is not they are lacking money but they have become perverted school children will go and take the gun in the hand and kill that the a dozen of them where from this is coming is only because the things are available before they are due and that is why here it is very important thing to be seen that we must get the things at the right time if we get the things before time it is in our own destruction so when you thus work hard sincerely earn the money and then see the difference now because of this it boon and all that these youngsters they have gone all over the world suddenly so much money which even their forefathers must not have seen and uh, i have seen in usa so much of dollars millions they used to get and sudden during that time they have constructed palaces um so i will please come to my place i'll go to their place and um, he will take me to his house it is not a house it is a big through 2 3 acres of land ponds trees landscaping like you know we see in the movies a huge bungalow 8 10 12 bedrooms a huge banquet hall a drinking hall a, everything is all like that and in that how many two two and half of the day and suddenly there was a you know breakdown in that boom and now the same person who was getting uh, let's say 200000 300000 per year 
suddenly he is out of job. Now to maintain even that is impossible. So they wanted to sell. Now who will buy the palace? So why did you construct that time? Because suddenly so much of money, what can I do? So let me have a big palatial house. See, whenever we get things before time, our balance is lost. And this is what Bhagavan is telling. Ishtan bhogan hi o devaha dasyanti vidne bhavitaha. So whatever prosperity we earn, let us share with and let us keep our balance intact. If that is not done, tair dattan apradaye mya bhungte ste neyavasaha. But we, if you imagine, it's only for me and selfishness alone, they are destroying themselves because that is the theft. And those who have not lost their balance, in spite of great prosperity that they have achieved in the life, te sarvakil vishaihi muchante. They are free from all the sins. And what is the sin? The sin of arrogance. I have got this, but nobody has got. And those who don't think about the people around them, those who don't think about what our country, our mother, our father have given us, and all the time only about oneself, they are indeed eating only the sin. So, after having told this lifestyle for the prosperity, individual, total and also the spiritual, three things are told in this. Individual prosperity, total prosperity and spiritual prosperity. Now, the same thing is demonstrated in the world, in the nature. Nature is following the spirit of yajna. How? Annad bhavanti bhutani. This is called as the wheel of yajna. And in this wheel there are six spokes. Three upper spokes, three lower spokes. And there in the center is a hub in which the spokes are surrendered. And there is a rim around the spoke. And this is called as the wheel of karma or the wheel of yajna. Now what is this? The lower spokes are uh, indicating prosperity in your material lifestyle. And the upper three spokes are indicating prosperity in your spiritual lifestyle. And both of them are surrendered in the center is Nityam Yajne Pratishthitam. So the uh, lifestyle of Yajna, what we have learned, that lifestyle of Yajna is the center hub. And from the center hub of the spirit of Yajna, if you start living properly, your material prosperity will be there as well as your spiritual prosperity will not be corrupted, it will be there. So, what is that? First, the material prosperity. Annad bhavanti bhutani. Bhutani means living beings. Now, what is the meaning of living beings? Only living? No, living being means where life is throbbing with prosperity. It is called as living beings. The other day, I was in uh, Bombay in one of the crossroads. And one person from Rajasthan, looking very good, from looks from a good family, he came selling those uh, garlands, you know, uh, flower ones. So he said, uh, Maharaj, please take, you know, uh, I will give you three f uh, for only ten rupees take and all that. So I looked at him, I said, hey, are you from Rajasthan? He said, yes. I said, you look from a good family, are you? He said, yes, Maharaj. I said, then living you are such a comfortable place, why have you come here? Sailing on the roadside and staying somewhere in the below the um, pavements or some bridge. Why are you leading such a life? You know what he told? He said, Maharaj, I am now 45. 
in my life for the first time i touch 100 rupees note for the first time at the age of 45 before that i never touch even what is the use of the big house and everything when there is no money there is a utter poverty there so yes there is no pollution there is no too much of congestion there is a big house but for what am i going to leak those walls or what so bhutani prosperity means availability of consumable goods in abundance is called as real life so annat bhavanti bhutani so anna is a consumable goods you know like vegetables are in the market so we don't go and start grazing unless you are a naturopath then a human beings don't eat so we get the vegetables cook them in a proper manner and eat similarly when we get this rice or the wheat we process it properly and then we convert it into eatable and then eat so annat bhavanti bhutani means where prosperity is there alone life is is understood otherwise what is the use of that life there is no prosperity annat bhavanti bhutani no question comes anna prosperity comes from where parjanyat anna sambhavah prosperity comes when every member of the society of the family is contributing his might for the prosperous production of a country trading is not the way to become rich the real method is the ability to produce wealth not misappropriate wealth so parjanyat anna sambhavah so parjanya is what rains fall not for themselves for their own sake rains fall so that the crops grow meaning the life of the rains is meant for others not for themselves so parjanyat anna sambhavah therefore prosperity can come when we start leading our life without selfishness so when we are the sincerely dedicatedly working for the betterment of the cause for what we are working then only the prosperity comes see i was in south africa and you know now that such a beautiful country is going to dogs you can see every day so one of my friend he was driving me and we stop somewhere stop somewhere and one uh, black person came and we were inside the car and he was driving and we stopped because there are red signal he came he was walking crossing that road while crossing the road he just kicked the car hey and went there so i asked him was it a human being or a buffalo he said swami ji these people think the whole world owes them everything see that is not life we have to learn to give then only prosperity only taking 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 the same thing has happened in our country the reservation and quota how long you know this is a destroying philosophy to those only because once you get the taste of getting the things without doing anything then you are working abilities blunted see the other day when i was in uh, uh this lions club meeting one person told one two stories of his life very good one he said once i was going by train and uh, on the chart my name was in the waiting list but i got the confirmation when i phoned yes my waiting list is cleared and my name is already okayed 
So with that phone information, I dialed, it was there, I got into the train. And then uh, he said, no, no, you are his waiting list, wait, we can't give anything. He said, I knew because my, I have phone already, so I was waiting. And then uh, he came and automatically my name was there, so he has to give me. And he said, I had to give him um, 20 rupees for me, 20 for my wife, so I gave him 50 rupees note. He's supposed to return 10 rupees. So he gave that 40 rupees a receipt. And then uh, I was waiting, he didn't return 10 rupees. Then I said, you have not returned me 10 rupees. She looked at me, the TT looked at me. He said, I thought you have some sense. Humne socha aap samajdar honge. That means 10 rupees are never asked back. And he went, he didn't give. Then I thought that I am a idiot who has asked my 10 rupees back in today's scenario. So corruption is legalized. Then he said one day I went somewhere in Ahmedabad and uh, I was sitting um, in the rail, on the railway station so one small boy came, polish, polish, polish. So he was looking very sweet and all that. He said, uh, how much do you take? He said, two rupees. He said, I have already my shoes polished, but I'll give you two rupees, take these two rupees. He said, take out the shoes. He said, no, I don't want polishing. He said, take your two rupees back. I don't want begging from you. I will only earn and eat. Not like this. See the difference? Once we develop this habit, and this is how the habit is spoiled throughout the world, we are not ashamed that we are uh, living in this world on the charity of the world. So what is the success of a government? We could get more loan. Their success is not, we have cleared the loan that they will not appreciate. We are taking more loan. Therefore, here, and this principle is applied for the material prosperity, is annat bhavanti bhutani parjanyat anna sambhavaha. So let us remember that prosperity is possible when every member of the society is ready to sacrifice. One day one Korean girl met me. She was in my camp. After two, three days, then she became a little open. And she said, Swamiji, I want to tell you something. So what is that? She said, you know, in India, Indian as an individual are rich. And in Korea, Korean as an individual is poor. But India is poor and Korea is rich. See how beautiful analysis. So, Parajanyat Anna Sambhavaha. The selflessness alone can produce prosperity. Then, Yadnyat Bhavati Parajanyaha. Where from the spirit of parjanya, selflessness comes, when we lead our life with the spirit of yajna, we have learned what is yajna. Yajna arhat karunu netra loko jam karma bandhara, tadartham karma konteya mukta sangha samachara. So yajna bhavati parjanya and yajna karma samud bhavaha. And yajna is not only on the paper. So do tell others, you should do this thing, you should not, not do like this thing. And everybody should be sincere, everybody should be... But as regard, I am concerned, I am an exception. No. Therefore, yajna karma samud bhavaha. Let this spirit be demonstrated by us in our own life. Then only our words carry meaning. Then only our words carry weight. So yajna karma samud bhavaha. Then karma brahmo bhavam vidhi. And this principle of leading the life of yajna and, and practicing this in our life is brahmo bhavam vidhi. This is the sanction of the good of the totality. 
Here Brahma means the Vedas. So Vedas are not addressing to an individual. Vedas are addressing for the good of all being. You know this Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, this Varna Vyavastha is distorted and presented in an ugly manner by our great politicians. One person asked me this question. Swamiji, one thing I don't like of your Krishna. I said, who cares? Neither Krishna cares nor I care. He said, why they have created this Brahman Kshetri Vaishya Shudra? I said, you know, if you have got little patience and little brain, then you will not ask this question. So, what is that? I said, look here. In the fourth chapter, this word, this thought comes. Chatur Varnam Maya Srishtam Guna Karma Vibhagashaha. Who is Brahman Kshetri Vaishya Shudra? Who is the Brahmachari Grastha Vana Prastha Sanyasi? This is determined according to the guna, whether you are sattvic, rajasic, tamasic, or whether you are a Brahmachari Grastha Vana Prastha Sanyasi. On the basis of this, the humanity is classified. Now, classification of a group of people is not a division. Classification is never a division. India is classified according to the languages into different states. So, should we say that India is divided? That work of division politicians are doing. And therefore, humanity is defined, classified according to the type of people they are. He who is predominantly knowledge-oriented is called as Brahmacha, is called as Brahmana. He who is leadership-oriented is called as Kshatriya. He who is trade-oriented is called as Vaishya. And he is service-oriented is called as Shudra. See? So, uh, karma brahmon bhavam vidhi, they are classic, therefore we should know what is our place. We cannot go and compete with everybody. And when this is not done, then we suffer in our life. And brahma akshara samud bhavam, and in this manner, when we lead our life with the spirit of yajna, keeping good of everything in mind with great sacrifice, through him, Paramatma is manifesting. See? So he becomes an instrument through which the Absolute is reflected without the blemish of relativity. And therefore, Tasma Sarvagatam Brahma Nityam Yajne Pratishtitam. Therefore, he who is thus leading, the life in the spirit of yajna and in and through every action of his, it is the Paramatma alone who is manifesting, who is reflecting. See how beautiful the whole thought is. Now, having said, having seen this from both the points of view, now we go further. Evam pravartitam chakram Nanu vartayati hayaha Nanu vartayati hayaha Agha yurindriya ramo Agha yurindriya ramo Mugham partha sajivati Mugham partha sajivati Evam pravartitam chakram nanu vartayati hayaha even in this manner, Chakram Pravartitam, this principle of Yajna is already in operation. Like you know, the code of conduct for the ministers or the uh, contestant is already in operation. Now you cannot do anything, you will be caught. So, Evam Chakram Pravartitam, Yaha na Anuvarta Yati Iha. He who does not follow these method of lifestyle which is already in operation. He is what? Agha Yuhu. His life is full of sin. 
इंद्रिया राम ही इज इंडलजेंट मोघम जीवती सहा ही इज लिविंग इन वेन दिस इज अ सिंपल ट्रांसलेशन नॉलेज टेक वर्ड बाय वर्ड वॉट भगवान हैज टू से एवं ईश्वरेण वेद यज्ञ पूर्वक जगत चक्रम वर्तित इन दिस मैनर बाय द इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द डिवाइन दिस वर्ल्ड इज ऑलरेडी इन मोशन वेद यज्ञ पूर्वक जगत चक्रम एवरीथिंग इज मूविंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड विथ द डिवाइन विल एज पर द लॉ ऑफ द नेचर नो कैन इमेजिन Suppose the son says that I am tired of staying in one place, getting bored. Let me go for a walk. No, you are not allowed. So whether you like or you don't like, you have to be on guard in your duty. In the same manner, whenever we are supposed to do something, we must not give us any opportunity or choice. Therefore, one principle I told you earlier, number of times. lesser the choice you give to yourself happier you are don't give any choice happiest you are when you don't give any choice what happens you accept the things as they are when you accept the things they are you don't react when you don't react you are happy see evam ishwarena ved yajna purvakam jagat chakram vartitam yaha na anuvartayati iha loke he who does not follow this principle of life in this world yaha karmani adhikrita hasan and he who is qualified to do the karma because he considers himself to be the body and himself to be the jeeva so as long as we are holding on to this principle that i am the body and the jeeva then we are karmani adhikrita ha we are qualified for the karma सच्च पर्सन अधिकृत हासन अघायु अघम पापम आयु जीवन ये स अघायु हिज लाइफ इज नथिंग बट ए नॉवेल ऑफ सिंस न वट इज द सीन हियर ओनली वन सीन द मिस्टेकन आइडेंटिटी वी आर नाइजर द बॉडी नॉर द जीव essentially we are sachidananda para brahma parmatma and when we start leading the life as if we are a finite being that acceptance of the finite being is the sin and this we continue to hold throughout life and not throughout life again in the next life also i received one sms wife tells husband I have done my prayers and asked the Lord, O oh Lord, let me get the same husband in my seven lives. So the husband said, I also prayed to the Lord. You are this, O oh Lord, let me let this be the last seventh life. Is it? Agha yuhu. the whole life is wasted indeed only in sins and what is the sin acceptance of the limitation as real then agayu papa jivana haiti yavad indriya ramah indriyaihi aramah aramanam a krida visheshu yasya sa indriya ramah he who is spending his whole life only for the satiation of the ticklings of his senses He is called as Indriya Ram. He is neither the Atma Ram nor the Jagjivan Ram. He is Indriya Ram. So Indriya Ram, ha, Mogham Rutha He Partha Sa Jivati. He Arjun. He is indeed living in vain. Why is living in vain? Because this is the opportunity by which we can discover our essential nature. it is only in this life that we can do it and although this is the ultimate this is the charam deha this is the supreme opportunity given to us and yet we do not utilize this opportunity 
and therefore mogham sajivati he is indeed wasting his time this opportunity given to him is being wasted mogham parthasa jivati so in short what is meant by this whole principle evam pravartitam chakram nanu vartayati yah now this is the principle doctrine given by the Par- paramatma the scriptures authority proved tested everywhere now don't waste time bhagwan says in again doing something new follow this sincerely in your life and make the best use of your life this is what is meant that is why it is said on the spiritual path if there is any latest discovery be aware it is only in the material sciences the latest discovery is honored not on the spiritual path therefore let us not spend our time in wrong identification a sinful living indriya ramaha therefore indulgent lifestyle and mogham jivati and not utilizing the best opportunity given to us तस्मात् अनेन अरिकृतेन कर्तव्यम एव कर्म इति प्रकरणार्थः सो व्हाट इज द कंक्लूजन कंक्लूजन इज अद्नेन अरिकृतेन दोज वर इग्नोरेंट अगेन आई रिपीट देयर इग्नोरेंट मींस व्हाट दोज हु टेक देमसेल्फ टू बी द बॉडी एंड दोज हु टेक देमसेल्फ टू बी द जीवा दे मस्ट एक्सेप्ट दिस डू दैट Now those who have become sufficiently purified, and they are now having a doubt whether I am a body or I am the jiva or I am someone else. See, Bhagwan Ramana Maharshi tells in his Udesh Sar. First, he tells the path of karma. Karturat neya prapete phalam. Have you studied the Udesh Sar? Okay. then second he tells the path of devotion what for path of karma for purification of the heart raga dvesha nivrutyartham very good then we follow the path of devotion for what purified heart should become single pointed so the mind has to be purified and made single pointed good then we follow the path of yoga what for so that this purified single pointed mind is under our control very good now the fourth path bhagwan takes up that mind which you wanted to purify which you wanted to make single pointed which you wanted to control first find out मानसम तो किम वॉट इज दैट माइंड विच यू वॉन्ट टू प्यूरिफाय वॉट इज दैट माइंड विच यू वॉन्ट टू मेक सिंगल पॉइंटेड वॉट इज दैट माइंड विच यू वॉन्ट टू कंट्रोल सो मानसम तो किम मार्गणे कृते वेन दस एनक्वायर्ड नैव मानसम माइंड विल डिसअपियर एंड वेन द माइंड विल डिसअपियर automatically you have no adhikar for karma this is the meaning adnena adhikrutena therefore as long as this world and the achievement and the failure in this world honor and the dishonor sukha and the dukha when all these things are great issues for us then adnya we are qualified for doing our karma sincerely now prag atma jnana nishtha yogyata prapti he before the attainment of the qualification for the inquiry about the truth prag atma jnana nishtha yogyata prapti he tadarthena karma yoga anushthanam adhikrutena anatma jnana kartavyam iti evad एव इति एतद् न कर्मणारंभात् इत्यतः आरभ्य शरीर यात्रा पिचते न प्रसिद्धि अकर्मणः इति एव अन्तेन प्रतिपाद्य यज्ञार्थात् कर्मणोन्यत्र इत्यादिना सो 
बिफोर द डॉन ऑफ दिस काइंड ऑफ क्वालिटी ऑफ आवर माइंड दैट आई वॉन्ट टू नो द ट्रूथ एंड नथिंग एल्स मैटर्स नाउ बिकॉज सो लॉन्ग आई हैव बीन लिविंग एज अ बॉडी एज अ जीवा इट हैज नॉट गिवन मी द फुलफिलमेंट and once you become aware about this that really i have been doing this thing for so long what i have achieved you know i told you once this uh, um tripura rasya there the guru is dattatreya and the disciple is uh, parshuram he is disgusted and he goes to a place where he finds peace so that mahatma tells him what is that peace he doesn't understand he tells you go to dattatreya he will teach you he comes to dattatreya dattatreya bhagwan says this is you have to do the tripura puja so do this tripura devi and do the puja so he takes that tripura devi and does puja and all upasana not for a day or two 12 years and after 12 years one day he comes back to his guru he said sir excuse me What is this you are keeping me busy in? Who is this Tripura Devi? I only went and put her there, and I only say Devi Ina Mahan, Kali Ina Maha, and Krishna Ina Maha, and I only go on offering and offering and offering, and she is only standing there. Hey, what is this? Who is that Devi? I think I wasted twelve years of my life. Then Bhagwan Datta Atre says, "You are not wasted. Now the inquiry is kindled in your life." now i can tell you what it is till then you wanted to do something go on doing and when you come to discover really na karmana na prajaya dhanena and then you are able to hold on to this inquiry therefore prak atma jnana nishta yogyata prapti tadarthena karma yoga anusthanam adhikrutena ajnanena anatma jnanena kartavyam eva iti etat therefore till such time we are intensely involved in contemplation we should keep ourselves busy in karma as well as upasana remaining we will see in our next class om purnamadah purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hari hi om श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम